I had suspicion that things weren't on the up and up, but there was no way in the world I thought anybody could ever put money in front of patients. I mean, it just didn't work. For, I'm stupid. I admit that I'm, I didn't graduate from high school. I, I'm stupid. And like I say, I'm one of those Catholic guys who like believes we're all brothers and likes wants to help everybody. And, and, and it, but in December, December 28, 2017, Judge Ostrager was our, our judge. He said, I'm going to blow this case wide open. And our case was in the New York Times front page, New, front page, New York Times. We had 40 articles, Bloomberg, you name it, did articles on us, you know. And he said, I'm going to blow this case wide open. I'm going to let the world see the amended complaint <clears throat> and what Girondi and San Rocco Therapeutics is accusing Bluebird Bayou and Third Rock Ventures of doing. I was laying in my bed in Italy. It was like 51 degrees in my house because going through the going through the trial, I didn't have any liquidity. I was borrowing money from my partner, Joey Feldman. He had borrowed the company $3.5 million that he'd never get back if we lost the case. Um, my attorney, Ken Sussman, Jew from New York, I love him like a brother, he took out a second mortgage on his house because he was on contingency. So there was no way I was going to ask anybody for money. So my house, I didn't, I didn't turn on the heat. And that was it. It was 51 degrees. It was 51 degrees. And um, I was uh, in my bed when I got a call from my attorney, Ken. He says, I just sent you the amended complaint. The judge said you can read it all. Up until then, it was protected under secrecy. Mm. I couldn't read it. It was attorney's eyes only secrecy. I don't know what happened. But like I said, I wasn't crying like, <laughs> but I was disappointed. I suspected that maybe they could have done what they did. But nothing hit me like when I read that they did do it. They really put money in front of patients' lives. And I, 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 I laid in bed on my, my phone and I just read it. And I read all the charges, and the charges were the result of discovery that I couldn't see, but my, current, my attorneys could. And all of a sudden, I'm reading the dates, the words, the documents that they, they used to fuck my son. He'd have been cured three or four years ago, and to fuck every one of his brothers and sisters who have sickle cell disease and thalassemia. They fucked every one of them. And I felt like the biggest piece of shit because I let them fuck them because I wasn't smart enough. When we started dancing in 2010, when they were blowing smoke up my ass about how I was the greatest father in the world, I didn't realize that those fucking fruit faggots from Harvard University and Yale were fucking me up my ass and at the same time fucking my patients. And in 2000, December 28, 2017, I was able to read it all. And I, there was nowhere in my house for me to hide. I felt like the, <clears throat> the, the, the biggest idiot just, I let, because by then, every sickle cell disease patient is my son or my daughter or my brother or my sister, every thalassemic patient, and I had let them do that. And uh, after that, the judge said to them, you know, this isn't a frivolous case. By then, they had spent 30 40 $50 million fighting us. Up until then, it was me and my Jew attorney from New York, Ken Sussman. Me and him. Us two. And Joey Feldman, my partner. Banking us, paying for experts. Paying for the you know, court, the discovery. I mean, it, it's just a nightmare. And, and that's why in the United States, unfortunately, most people can't afford justice. Mm. And uh, the judge finally, like in 2018, he told him, he says, you know, you're treating this as a frivolous case. It is not a frivolous case. But COVID came. <laughs> so what happened? Our court case? Delayed. Mm. Delayed. 
delayed. And we didn't get in front of the judge until October 29th of 2020. And uh, the way he did it, he gave us four days. And because of COVID, you had to do it by Zoom. So we sent in all our affidavits. They sent in all their affidavits. The judge read all the affidavits. And then for the first two days, they got to kind of find holes in our armor and make us look like fools or make it look right. like we were lying. And uh, I was the first guy on the stand. And we were in Boston because it, in 2021, we hired Greenberg Trowrig, three guys, guys from uh, Massachusetts, and they had a bigger office than Ken's office in New York. So we went to Massachusetts for the case. And good guys, by the way. Um, so I was the first guy up, you know. And I was on the stand for an hour and a half. It was easy for me, Danny. All I had to do was tell the truth. Right. I mean, it, I didn't have to remember a goddamn thing. I just told the truth. And I got done. And then our president was on, Sam Selman. He never took a paycheck. I never took a paycheck. Sam Selman didn't even have a sick kid. I hired him in 2009. From 2009 to 2020, he never took a paycheck. I never took a I took my first paycheck when we settled the agreement when we settled the, the case in 2021 I took my first paycheck my, my my first paycheck you know and I'm taking a salary of 150,000 and when I saw that there was 19,000 on my credit card that shouldn't have been charged I wrote a check back to the company that's the kind of capitalist that we are or we were in the United States of America the first guy to sacrifice is the boss He's not the CEO making $34 million like Fold when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt with all those poor people's pensions and he got a golden parachute. Capitalism, that's not capitalism. That's criminalism. So anyway, I was the first up. Sammy was the second up. Greg LaPointe was the third guy up. He was the CEO of Sigma Tau. Great guy. And boy, they couldn't even ding us. Couldn't ding us. There was... Thousands of people watching the webcast. It kept getting interrupted. And the guy on the webcast was saying, Your Honor, we, we can't, you know, the, 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 we can't technically support the thing anymore. I mean, so many people are watching. You know, it was incredible. And then we went the next day with our experts, damage experts, et cetera, et cetera. It was Friday. The judge said, Okay, Monday and Tuesday, you guys are up at bat. Now my attorneys got to find the chinks in their armor and the judge ended the day and he said I don't know where you're going with this Bluebird Third Rock Ventures this could be very painful for you and then he looked at me and it was weird because me, he didn't really know he was looking at me because it was a podcast but he was looking at me and he was looking into my heart and he said, in the state of New York, damages are a slippery slope. And that was a message to me. So I went to my Aunt Gloria, 91 years old. She died right after the trial. Went to see her over the weekend and went to church and went to Mass and talked to my mother and talked to my friends and Joey. Sunday night, I get a call from Mark Berthium. Pat, got to get on the phone. I said, well, why, Mark? It's fucking 10 o'clock. They want to settle. So they want to settle. <laughs> they can talk to me tomorrow morning. I'm going to bed. Yeah, but come on. I mean, uh, this is what we're waiting for. Hey, Mark, I'll talk to you in the morning went there <clears throat> they shuffled papers in front of me he said Drandy because of course I'm the bad guy the whole time I'm an idiot I'm the high school dropout who was playing over his head and um, you know street guy father good intention father all that bullshit rock star in Italy and all this and anyway uh, Drandy what will it take to end this? He said, well, what do you mean? Well, what do you need? 
to make this stop. I said, well, I want my product back. And I want enough money to pay my attorneys, to pay my debt, and to have enough money to move forward and treat patients. That's what I want. How much will that be? I'm bound by secrecy, so I can't give you the number. It was in the millions, obviously. More than that, I can't say. My attorneys, if they're watching, or maybe they're not, maybe they are, they'll be cringing right now. They're probably getting ready to ball me out after the podcast, but I don't really care. I'm going to die soon anyway. I mean, how long do we live, you know? I mean, I'm just <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to do, you know? So I said, it's X amount of dollars, and give me my product back. And they said, done! If I had asked for double <laughs> what I asked for, they just said done. But I didn't need double. Mm. I said, just give me enough to get back on the road. And so that's what we're doing